at daybreak, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the sum of 13.3 billion naira for the takeoff of the community policing initiative across the country. Buhari revealed that the federal government has increased its investment in arms, weapons, and other necessary equipment that are towards strengthening the national security. Right now, via the phone, we have a chat with Martin Slumba. Martin Slumba is a public affairs analyst. Hello, good morning, Martin, and thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's good morning, Martin. Here. All right. Now, is this a welcome development? The way I see the entire initiative, the entire policing structure of Nigeria, I do not believe that this community policing will change anything or add value to what some of us have been advocating for. There is a big difference between community policing and state policing. What we have been saying is that we need state police so that within the state, the democratic structures will be empowered to be able to take decisive decisions within the state's framework. Now, when you say community policing, it still doesn't change anything fundamentally because the central structure will still remain. And what is happening in Nigeria, what people are beginning to voice out is that there seems to be a grand plan to subsume, you know, uh, the, the, if you like, the, the, the powers, the authorities within even local councils into the hands of the federal government, which is so big, so bogus, so humongous. Community policing as envisaged by the federal government, I think that Nigerians should look at it very critically and begin to if you like, protest now that it is still morning before we will begin to hear things like, ah, we didn't know, we didn't know. Clearly, the direction the government is going is to, you know, further uh, emasculate civil society from, you know, adequate security. Yeah, before I let uh, Margaret come in, uh, uh, what are the fundamental differences uh, between state police and community mm -hmm. policing a lot of people okay. there may not know there is any difference at all okay now what we have in nigeria is uh, clearly a very central uh, command structure now you have a situation where a state governor cannot do anything the inspector general of police can change the commissioner of police in the state as he pleases now, by the time you have community policing, it's still going to be the same thing. Mm. The Inspector General of Police can do as he pleases. The Commissioner of Police in the state can do as he or she pleases. But when you have state police as a different arm of government, like today you see that regional blocks are saying that they want to have their own security uh, structure. Like you have Amoteco, like uh, I believe that in the, in the north you have uh, Hizba Police and what have you. What you now find is that within those communities, so to say, within those states, the indigents of those states who are more familiar with, you know, the nature, the topography and what have you of their states, they are more effective in handling, you know, uh, policing. Now, the community policing that we are looking at, at least from my understanding of what the federal government wants to do, is that you're still going to have uh, police people from different parts of Nigeria mm. going into a community, more or less trying to study the community or trying to understand the community, mm. trying to know maybe you build a barracks in a place like maybe Berenin Kebi, you still have an evil man there, you still have, the only thing is that he's likely to stay there for long enough to familiarize and really get to know the place, get to know the community and get information from the community and look after the community. It's completely different from when the indigents of that community are actually in charge of the policing of our community. So that is the difference. All right. I, I, I think the federal government, you said community policing has every stage by the federal government. But the, the latter part of what you just said now is the indigents of um, this community. I, I really think that's what the federal government is trying to do because we have the Amoteco core, we have the Ibubago in the southeast and the north, like you mentioned. I really think that is 
where the federal government is panning its attention towards and not bringing in police or do you have any contrary statements to we that? Wait, we wait to see. I'm very certain that what you are going to find, you're still going to have the command structure the way it is. You're still going to have it centralized. You're still going to have all the decisions coming from Abuja. And that is the difference. If the state governor is in charge of policing in his state, the constitution says he's the chief security officer of the state, but he doesn't have the power. It makes no sense. Mm. What we are asking for is carry the power, decentralize it, give it to the state governor to run his show. At the end of the day, you can have a buffer that is the federal government's buffer. Every state can contribute. But today you have a situation where an evil man, for instance, is maybe the commissioner of police in, uh, in uh, Adamawa State. He doesn't know anything about that state. The best thing is to have an Adamawa man in charge of policing in Adamawa. Then the federal police, Adamawa people can contribute, are you with me, to the mm. federal police as a buffer. That is what we are saying. Anything different from this arrangement that I have just suggested is a waste of resources, is a waste of effort, is nonsensical. That is my position. Now, let's talk about corruption, mm. you know, uh, corruption, everybody has been complaining about the level, high level of corruption in the police force. Wouldn't you think that it will be much reduced with this uh, uh, community policing mm. initiative or program? It will, it will get worse. Wow. You see, it will get worse. There is something you, you have to understand. Uh, human nature is such that... Okay, let me just give you a simple example. You know, uh, we had this due process of this. I remember we had uh, Dr. Eze Kwesi. Uh, at a point, they were calling her Madam due process. Now, if you had three people, so to say, uh, to give money to, eh, mm -hmm. maybe you get a federal government job. Uh, contract, uh, supply books, or do whatever. And now you have three people to settle, for instance. Now, with the introduction of the due process office, the chances are that the number of people you will settle will now increase. You have to take cognizance of the due process people. So instead of maybe three people to settle, you are now looking at about six people to settle. The truth is that the way we run Nigeria is simply just mind boggling. You have a situation where we are complaining that the structure of the police is problematic. We want state police. You now say, okay, you're going to have community policing. Okay, fine. What has been the nature of things before now? You have a situation where they tell you that every DPO renders account. He sends something to maybe his commissioner of police. The commissioner of police sends something to the IG. So they claim. Is this, now, is this official? Is it official? It's, it's not official, but uh, you and I know how the system runs. I don't now, know. Police, <laughs> but we can't work based on assumptions, you know. The branches. You're only making more avenues available for this corruption to try. That is the way I see it. Wow. All right, now, now looking at the, the statement by the president to say the setting up of the police trust fund to help, um, of course, aid the funding of the police force um what would what would say now this is something that initial at the inception of the nigerian police force it would have come up but now setting it up at this time yeah it it may seem like a welcome development but do you think it's going to thrive honestly this police trust fund of the thing we've had similar uh, things like that in the past i remember that uh, when ambassador was president there was a police security trust fund or something, which was bedeviled by all manner of accusations, counter accusations, allegations of corruption. And uh, at the end of the day, we didn't see anything, we didn't hear anything again. If I remember correctly, I think uh, maybe uh, Jubin uh, Martin also was in charge of that uh, trust fund. Anyway, it's nothing new. Uh, what we have today is uh, states continue to contribute. I know that every year, Lagos State Government, River State Government, they buy vehicles, they buy communication gadgets, they do all sorts of things to help the police force. But you see, the problem remains. It's endemic. The structure is the main issue that is bedeviling the police force. So you think the police force needs a restructuring? It, this trust fund is just going to be another avenue for people to eat money, so to say. So Sorry, you think the police, the, force, the police force needs a restructuring more like... 
total, absolute, okay. head, head to toe, you know, inside out, completely, completely. Mm. We need oh. to devolve power. We need to make these things, you know, spread so that different blocks of power will eventually bring about a balance. That's how it is. If you don't have a balance of power, we'll continue to have all these uh, things that we are having. We'll continue to have mutual suspicion. We'll continue to have doubt. In fact, to be honest with you, community policing, where we started this discussion from, is going to, in fact, compound the issues. Mm. Because in a country where you have more or less two systems running parallel, it makes no sense. And that's the truth. You have northern states, at least 12 northern states or so, you know, running Sharia. How do you how do you have a common you know uh, purpose? How do you have a common goal? If you have different factions uh, or fractions rather in mathematics, you cannot solve any equation until you have a common denominator. Do you understand? It is that common denominator that will now make it possible for you to solve the fractions. Mm -hmm. So where we are now, we have to tell ourselves the truth. We have to openly confront these things that are challenging us as a country and as a people. Otherwise, we can't move forward. Martins, you don't seem to see anything positive about this community policing. But at least we know that. Uh, one, of the, really pessimistic, you know? <laughs> one of the positive things uh, that appears to be very clear is the fact that this would create employment, at least. It is not true. Uh -uh. It oh, is wow. not true. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you how these things work. Hmm? Right now, you find, uh, you know, many people on the highways, many of our policemen on the highways. You go to the stations, you find that most of their personnel, they are not uh, behind the desk. They are not on duty. Everybody is doing his hustle, to, so to say, on the road. Now, you have a difference between the way the police uh, administration runs in southern Nigeria uh, compared to northern Nigeria. These are facts. These are things you can cross-check. Uh, I'm not making them up. Checkpoints all over southern Nigeria. You don't find uh, checkpoints like that in northern Nigeria. It's an issue. And we must tell ourselves the truth. Now, that you're going to create employment, I don't know how. Right now, there are a number of police personnel that, you know, I can say are redundant. Mm -hmm. They're not really doing effective policing. They are not. Standing by the roadside, how is that police work? How? In the real sense of it. A situation where you you don't even get any criminal report. You don't, and you just begin to disturb people on the road. People that travel by, by by road, for instance, instead of getting to your destination in four hours, because of the several checkpoints, you get to your destination around eight hours. Sometimes you spend the whole day on the highway. It makes no sense. And at the end of the day, you say you want to create employment. How? Do you understand? Mm. The only way you're going to create employment right now, they are not even uh, effectively managing the staff that they have which is why states come in to contribute funds and all of the, uh, all, all of that by the time you now say you're creating state police and already you have drawn out a budget you say 13 point something billion uh, my my brother it is not sustainable it is not sustainable i the also the president also said that the it has increased its inf investment in arms, weapons, and other necessary equipment. And then you mentioned that there's a need for restructuring in the Nigerian police force. Other people have said there's a need for um, restructuring in the security force generally. Now, having equipment and arms without restructuring, which yeah, equipment are important, of course, to safeguard the nation, but which do you think is on the top list based on priority? Because you have equipment and then you don't have a restructured, according to you, we don't have a restructured police force. So which is of utmost importance? What do you think? Um, the restructuring, mm. the complete, uh, you know, re-evaluation of our police force is priority number one. You know, uh, today you see what is happening. You have soldiers on the streets. I mean, what is the meaning of that? That clearly tells you that we don't have effective policing. And the problem is simply the structure. If you have states in charge of their policing, in charge of their security, we won't have all this rubbish that we're seeing now. You know, a situation where I come out of my house and the first person I see is a soldier with arm to the teeth. I mean, what is that? You know, it is clear that uh, the government has failed security-wise. And uh, the best way to go is to start by restructuring the police. It will help the country, it will help, you know, our security, our architecture, to make things better. You know, that's the first thing, that's priority number one.
Now, tell us, um, there are these uh, uh, states, you know, coming up with uh, um, local, what's it now? Uh, security outfits, you know, talk about uh, Motoku. Uh, in the southeast, you have uh, Ibubago oh, yeah. and what have you. And so, are they going to coexist with this uh, community policing program? The truth, as far as I understand it, is that the community police that Buhari has in mind is going to be a violent police force. Wow. Uh -huh. That is my understanding. I don't see how they are going to, if you like, disband this bar, for instance. I don't see how they are going to disband Amoteko. Amoteko already has a law behind it. Hmm. Bagu also has this law. If we say or we claim that we're running the federation, there is no way all of those security uh, structures or entities are going to be dissolved. There is no way. All right. So, so they are going to run side by side. Hmm. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you very for much. Sharing your thoughts on this, and you seem to have a lot of um, pessimistic opinions. But I think now um, the government are they're doing their best, even though their best might not be I good wish, enough. I wish I wish them luck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. We share. We we appreciate you, and also we wish the government luck in whatever they get doing to secure well. the lives and properties of Nigerians. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right. Thank you.